At the beginning of the American Civil War, when Virginia voted to secede from the Union, the United States Navy was forced to abandon Gosport, its finest naval facility. The USS Pawnee arrived with orders to make sure that nothing of any value was left to fall into Confederate hands, including the pride of the Navy, the 40-gun steam frigate Merrimack. Burn every ship that can't be towed. Burn the machine shops, the storehouses. What about the dry dock, sir? Destroy it completely. The one thing we mustn't leave for the enemy is the dry dock. Harmon! Sir? Harmon, you know the dry dock better than any of us. Take a detail and 20 kegs of powder, make it 25, and blow it up. Yes, sir. dry dock going up yet. Harmon. Sir? We, we placed the kegs. We, we lit the powder trail. It must have burnt out, sir. So, may get the only first-rate dry dock south of the Mason-Dixon line. God knows how they'll use it against us. What they have done, gentlemen, is they have towed the Merrimack into the dry dock. And on the undamaged hull, they're constructing a ship to be armored with iron. If the rebel Navy's building an ironclad, then we damn well better build one for our side. You, gentlemen, are hereby appointed a special board to consider designs for an ironclad and on approval expedite construction. Mr. Secretary, where are these designs going to come from? I'm advertising for submissions. If they haven't kept their plan secret, why should we? Mr. Secretary, before we commit funds and manpower to such a, an untested idea, how do we know the South is building an iron ship? The rumors are thick as Mississippi mud. They've been known to send agents up here to plant false rumors. Yes, yes. Johnny Reb is more effective with the cloak and dagger than we are, granted. Still, we're not totally inept. It happens there's a young lady of a fine Virginia family going to school in Baltimore, distantly related to one of our officers. He vouches for her res So we know about the ironclad from a spy? I'll say no more. 
except that I hate to apply such an ugly word to such a beautiful lady. But that's the best kind, isn't it? <laughs> Quartermasters made Leslie Harmon. Two witnesses saw you stamp out the powder fuse in the dry dock. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Sir, they must have mistaken me for somebody else. Men of your own detail. Uncle Joe, I hate to see a fellow Virginian like this. Couldn't we take those chains off the boy? It's all right, son. Go ahead. Sir, shackles are standard procedure. Now be an angel, Joey, and do as your daddy tells you. Take him off. Dismissed. I'm not a Virginian. I'm from New York. New York? Well, then why in the world did you do what you did? Why didn't they put me to burning the ship, spiking the cannon? I would have done it, I swear. This is my second hitch. Look at my record. I, I don't disobey orders, but... But blowing up the dry dock, the stone blocks would have fallen on houses in town. You have to understand, I, I was stationed in Gosport two years. I made friends. Merciful God, that's who those stones would have killed. I mean, orders are orders, yes, but I'm sorry, I couldn't kill my friends. Well... I think that sounds like a pretty decent reason. Don't you think so, too, Uncle Joe? Makes no difference. Disobeying a lawful order in the face of the enemy is the worst military offense there is. You'll have a court-martial, of course. The only question is whether he'll be hanged or shot. Now, is there anything else you want to say? No, sir. Good. Now, sit down and listen very carefully. This is my only son, Joseph Jr. And I tell you, if he were in your frightful situation, I would pray to heaven he'd be given the chance we're about to give you. Go ahead, Joe. Harmon, you haven't seen a newspaper since your arrest. You don't know what they've been writing about you. To the South, you're a hero for what you did at Gosport. Is that right, sir? This gives you a chance to make up for it if you have the nerve. To do what, sir? To escape from the brig. We'll arrange it. Slip through the lines to Virginia. We'll help you. In the dry dock, you gave them. The rebel navy is building an armored ship on the hull of the Merrimack. You have the technical training to get us the specifications we need. Excuse me, sir. They hang spies, don't they? You can help me escape, but in Virginia, I'd be all on my own. Not quite. I'll be with you. No one will suspect a friend of mine. Trust me, Leslie. Why should I? I trust you. I'll tell you my name. Betty Stewart. You trust me with your name because I'm not in a position to do you any harm. Well, you ought to trust me because I'm the only one who's going to do you any good. What good? I can present you to the people of Norfolk who matter, who can open the gates of Gosport for you. How would that help me? Harmon. If you get this job done, you can come home to a presidential pardon. Well. I may know your name, Betty Stewart, but I don't know why you're going against your own people. I'm not going against my people, but I've been to school in the North, and I've read all the books you all have read. There's no civilized country anywhere in the world where a man can hold another man as a slave. Except our country. Now that's what I'm against. But isn't that worth fighting for? Right now, miss, I'm just fighting to save my neck. He can manage without you. 
What? Norfolk society will fall all over the hero. Don't go back, Betty. Now, Joe, there are lots of girls around here to take your mind off of me. <laughs> Nobody can take my mind off of you. Even you can't do that. It's not because you haven't tried. Betty, it's too dangerous for you to keep crossing the lines. Nonsense. I do it all the time without the slightest trouble. But this time you'll have Harmon to worry about. Will he do something stupid and give himself away and then give you away? You'll be placing your life in his hands. No more than he'll be placing his in mine. Fair is fair. I don't give a damn what's fair. I just have a terrible feeling that if you go back now, I'll never see you again. Joe. I love you dearly, but I have to go, and I'm going. How did you ever do it, Mr. Harmon? Well, Mrs. Fletcher, Miss Betty is so pretty, the guards just looked at her and never noticed me. <laughs> is that true, Blossom? Oh, well, I'm sure I don't know, Betty. We bribed the guards. Everybody knows that damn Yankees will do anything for money. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Harmon, you must come with me. Colonel Fletcher wants to meet you. I'd be delighted. Do you see who's here, Betty? Catesby Jones. I thought he was still in Alabama, didn't you? I never gave a thought about where he was. Go and say hello to him. Well, I will not, Mother. He can come over here and say hello to me. If he wants to, and if not, fine and dandy. Well, really? By taking that attitude with your father, where do you suppose you'd be? Mother! Betty Stewart, how ever did you get in? Did you forget that a linen or woolen or wool flannel garment or undergarment is the price of admission for ladies? It's for the war effort, you know. Oh, well, Mrs. Coy, I had a bundle of woolens I was going to bring, but I was so anxious to present y'all to Mr. Leslie Harmon that I forgot. Oh, well, if that's true, then uh, you can just go home and get it. Well, that'll take an hour. Can't you just bring it to you? If I didn't put her in my book, she isn't supposed to be here. Salome Coit. You're as mean as you look. Mother, now it's all right. I'll go home and get Now, it. now, now, ladies, ma'am. Ma'am, if you'll allow me, Miss Betty will pay her admission if you dare kind of give me a moment. Gentlemen, close ranks. Lady, sorry for the delay, but if everything is in order, perhaps Miss Betty would care to dance. Put that in your book, Salome, if you can write with your mouth open. Well, now, Betty said we're supposed to do something special about you, but she didn't say what. But I don't think I'm going to ask her just now. Why not? Well, because there was a time when I had high hopes she was going to be Mrs. Catesby Jones. It didn't happen then, but now, just look at them. Lovely couple, aren't they? I suppose so. Just joking, ma'am. <laughs> Miss Betty said she would introduce me to some lieutenant. Will you pick one? I'll introduce you. No, ma'am. It's a special one. He's aide to the Admiral in command. Oh, that's Lieutenant Guilford. Come along. Excuse 
with me, Lieutenant Guilford. Mrs. Stewart. May I present Mr. Leslie Harmon, the hero of Gosport, you know? I certainly do. Mr. Harmon, we are all in your debt. It was nothing. Uh, sir, I was told you might advise me on how to apply for a commission in the Confederate Navy. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do better than that. You come around to the Navy Yard tomorrow, and I'll take you to meet the Admiral. Thank you very much. Well, I couldn't have that lady sending you home. I'd have to stop looking at you. You must have not seen anything but alligators in Alabama. Well, no alligator in Alabama half as pretty as you. Is that a fact? How much did you trouble your head about me when you went off down there? I'll tell you how much. I came home on leave dying for you. And you were away at school in Baltimore. Well, you weren't here. I had to go to parties with boys I didn't care for. So I decided to go away too. Betty, I'm in the Navy. I mean, I know it was the Union Navy then, but still I gotta go where they send me. You could have taken me with you. I thought of that. I dreamed I was asking you and you saying yes. But we were both so young and there was plenty of time. Then maybe. But war changes time. And school in Baltimore changed me. How? Well, for one thing, it's not parties that interest me anymore. And for another, I'm not as young as I used to be. Length, 263 feet. The beam is 51 feet. And draft, 22 feet. Now that's what they've done with the hull of the Merrimack. The superstructure is a casemate, tilted in at a 30 degree angle to make enemy shots glance off. Oak planks to be covered with iron armor. The guns aren't in place yet, but I found out about them. Your friend, Lieutenant Jones, brought four of them from the cannon foundry in Alabama. He didn't tell me that. He didn't tell me either. I was told by your sources at the Navy Yard. Very helpful, thanks to you. Well, they believe what I believe. Now, four guns on the starboard side, four to port, one pivot gun in the bow, and another one in the stern. Wouldn't it be safer to take that north in your head than on paper? I'm not taking it. Opal, y'all come on in. Opal is my mother's maid. Cletus is her husband. My mother contracts him out to the Gosport officer's mess. Got the shoe ready, Miss Betty. They carry messages back and forth all the time. Opal's gonna take this one. You ever have any trouble getting through the lines? Oh, no, sir. Going north, we tells them we want to be free. Coming back south, we tells them it's too damn cold up there. Cletus, make sure you stitch this good. Use an old thread, Miss Betty. Nobody won't notice nothing. Opal, you be careful. I guess your mother doesn't believe what you believe, or she wouldn't own slaves. She doesn't like slavery. It's the way she was brought up. It's a way of life. But there are some southern people who are not that strong for it. <laughs> but they don't mind killing northern people to preserve it. Well, they say the war's not about slavery. It's about freeing the south from economic oppression by the north. Don't let them fool you. It's about slavery. Well, they never keep us waiting here. If you'll excuse me, I'll go see what the trouble is. Good day, Miss Betty. Lieutenant Guilford. It's remarkable how just seeing you puts me in mind of all kinds of good things. Mm. Such as good news for Leslie Harmon. If you happen to run into him, you tell him the Admiral's forwarded his application to Richmond. His commission should come through soon. Well, I will tell him if I see him. He's going to make an excellent officer. Well. You have pleasant lunch. Oh, there is a um, test firing on the 29th at the range in connection with the Merrimack. Oh, pardon me. She's the Virginia now. Everybody still calls her the Merrimack. Anyway, you tell Leslie he's invited. Good day. Good day, Mr. Jones. Good day, Lieutenant. 
Why didn't he invite the man himself? Why do you have to ask you? Well, Leslie's hard to find these days. Everybody's house guest. Well, it's nice of Leslie to keep in touch with you. Well, my, my lieutenant. We aren't jealous, are we? No, should I be? Our table is ready. Thank you. Betty, tell me a bit about this Yankee hero of yours. Well, I know he saved a lot of people's lives. It's on your mind, Catesby. Guilford is not just another Admiral's aide. He's the, uh, he's area detective. He's officer in charge of Secret Service. His job, Betty, is to send spies north against the Yankees and catch spies that uh, they send here. Well, that's quite a job. Hope he's good at it. Care for some sherry? The beauty of my invention is that the turret turns to bring guns to bear on target. You don't have to turn the whole ship. I see you've already named your ship uh, the Monitor. It's perfect name, Mr. President. A Monitor restrains and corrects wrongdoers, your enemies. Mr. Erickson. I assume there's more to your ship than the model shows. The model only shows the ironclad portion above water, Mr. Secretary. If you had studied my drawings, you would know that below the water line is a wooden hull housing two engines and quarters for the crew. I'm concerned about the stability of this vessel, Mr. Erickson, and I looked at all your figures. To look is one thing. To know the mathematics required to understand is another. Your personal remark, sir, does not answer my concerns. My credentials answer you. Through the years, they've been building ships, including USS Princeton, which was first warship to be propelled by screw. I got skill like no engineer living. If you don't trust me with this ship, you cost your country the benefit of my services. I wait for your decision. Unassuming son of Sweden, isn't he? He didn't mention that a cannon on the Princeton blew up and killed some people. Erickson designed that cannon, but he had nothing to do with building it. Well, gentlemen, yes or no? We have information from Gosport that the Merrimack will come out of dry dock in four to five months. Nobody can start from scratch and build us an ironclad in that time except Erickson. He's promised to deliver us one in 90 days. On that basis, I say yes. Commodore? I agree with Commodore Smith. I say take the thing home and worship it. It resembles nothing on the earth or on the seas or in the skies, so you can't be accused of idolatry. A simple no would have sufficed, Commander. Mr. President? All I can say is what the girl said when she put her foot in the stocking. It strikes me there's something in it. Fire! No! Leslie. Lieutenant. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Well, your glass is empty. You! Come here, you black rascal. Why is this gentleman's glass empty? You think you've been freed by the abolitionists? Well, 20 lashes convince you you're not a free nigger yet. Coming right back with a drink for the gentleman, master. Lieutenant Jones, you may fire when ready. Ready? Fire! Dear God, it went through. I don't know what to tell you. Secretary Mallory. I was assured that three inches of iron would turn away the heaviest shot. Mr. Secretary. There's a simple solution. You just put on four inches of iron, sir. Four inches of iron. That is no solution. Is three inches of iron also hold and still float? I'm afraid so. That ain't how it gone the first time. What first time? Well, they done the same test last Monday. Not for no crowd, just for a few gentlemen. How did it go? Well, the thing they shoot at that time is in the storage over there. They got the door locked, but you might could go around the back and peek in the window down below. Thanks.
It was another section of the casemate. I could see two layers of iron plate, each two inches thick. So that's four inches, not three. The cannonballs hardly made a dent. That test was the real one. So what you saw today was just a show, just to get the wrong information sent to the North. I bet half the civilians there were invited because Guilford suspects they're spies. Including you. Well, he made a mistake with me thanks to Cletus. You've got to send Cletus North with the right information. Not Cletus. Then send somebody else. It's got to go up tonight. They have to know they can't sink the Merrimack with standard guns. They must add more firepower. Listen to the man. You know, a little while ago, you were only concerned about yourself. Now you're ready to march with John Brown. Maybe now I see how much I have to make up for. If I'd blown up the dry dock like I was ordered, there'd be no place to build that monster. Well, you can make up for it. By taking the information north. Tonight. Go the quick and easy way. Just get through the pickets along the beach and you know where the boat is. Two miles across the bay and you're safe at Fortress Monroe. No. No, no, send someone who knows an overland route. There'll be a full moon on the water tonight. Well, then you go late when the moon sets. Betty, I'm not finished here. Yes, you are finished here. I can't have you staying on with Guilford suspecting you. He could arrest you at any moment. Please go, Leslie. I got you into this. I don't want them to hang you. Why should that bother you? You've got him. Why should you care about me? Because we're friends. What a foolish question after everything we've been through together. Don't you care about me? I'd do anything for you. Then go. That's what you can do for me. Now do it. Yes, Miss Bitt. Stuart, I wish I knew what to do with you. Don't they teach you that at Annapolis? Well, they don't teach me what I need to know now. Is it right for me to marry? Or with the war on? All you need to know is if you love me. Oh, yes, I love you, Betty. I love you so much. I'm out of my mind thinking what's right for you. Before the war, I was willing to wait, but now suddenly I can't wait. But how long is this war going to last? If it's a short war, then maybe, maybe the right thing for us to do is to wait. It's going to be a long war. Why do you say that? General Lee says so. I read it in the Richmond paper. He says our country will have to go through a long and terrible ordeal. Expiation for our sins. What sins? Slavery. General Lee says it's an evil thing. General Lee is supposed to be the finest officer in the country, but I doubt what he knows about sin. But maybe he knows how long the war's gonna last. Oh, Betty. Betty, my darling, are you saying we ought to be married now? Yes. 